American Embassy and on behalf of the American government, congratulations. Let me ask you, what is the key benefit to the human condition or to scientific progress of your outstanding contribution? Um, basically, what we have done has led to a deeper and better understanding of the molecules that make life work, large, complicated protein molecules that are behind almost every biological function. By understanding them better, we can design better drugs, we can design better proteins. It's basically a bit like being a mechanic who sees a car as a black box versus as actually knowing something about the motor inside. Where would you like to get your car fixed? I mean, hmm. kicking the tires is fine, but knowing how they actually work helps a huge amount. Absolutely. That is a obviously incredibly important question, and my view is that by studying the basic functions of cells that make up our body in the brain and in other tissues we provide a fundamental description of how these cells work in the body which is the prerequisite for understanding how these cells do not work in disease mm. and so in understanding better how in our case in particular cells traffic different types of content within the cell. We lay the basis for understanding diseases such as diabetes on one extreme mm. or Alzheimer's on another extreme. In general terms, it's understanding markets, which are very important for the way resources, resources get allocated uh, to various to different uses in the economy. Um, we're not curing cancer or anything like that, but uh, that's a, a fundamental uh, task of the economic enterprise. <laughs> what inspired or triggered your quest? Uh, the desire to solve things before other people in my case. Mm. So, but and eventually this drive lead to better understanding and could help mankind. But it's really the desire to understand, to solve problems. Terrific. You know, I think, I'll speak for myself, but maybe I'm speaking for my colleagues too. Most scientists uh, like us like to solve problems. Mm. Uh, the chemistry group had actually the same answer because we're all solving problems. We have to find problems that are solvable. That's right. the art of doing science. Yeah. Uh, you have to be uh, fortunate to be in an environment, and we all have been, where we can solve these problems, and we have to have great teachers whose examples we can follow. Uh, and uh, mm. all of those things are required, but at the end of mm. the day, it's the love of solving problems. And we mm. pick the problems uh, in large part by what we become exposed to. We have mentors and, uh, and teachers, and some of it is accidental, the problems mm -hmm. that, we pick, that we end up working on, uh, but we always have this, in, this sort of quality of wanting to solve problems. Um, so certainly the challenge of understanding things better. Uh, I agree with Gene about the important uh, role of understanding financial markets and how they affect the resource allocation. The question is how do we build models or uh, that, should, that, that enhance our understanding, that add clarity to it so we can understand better what the empirical evidence is, so we can understand better what you know, models are good and bad for us. So it's, it's kind of enhancing that type of understanding that, that really got me going. What advice do you give to young people who want to make a contribution to humanity through science or scholarship like you have? Well, the first question really is, are they interested in science? Mm -hmm. Does the sort of thing that we do inspire them to want to do science? I think they have to realize that if they're going to do science, they have to be smart, they have to be willing to work hard, and they have to be excited about understanding things that people haven't understood before. Clearly, the hope is that their teachers will help them to do this, that by reading they will learn more about it, but it's not just something that is for everybody, and uh, they should really be concerned about their future there are many problems in the United States now where people who are outstanding scientists instead of 
continuing in science are going to work in business because there are no openings for them. So mm. it's a comp I think a simple answer is not really available. Right. I think uh, one, one has to have a passion for science. Mm. It's not something that, uh, that you can pick and choose uh, mm. among various options. Uh, I don't know, for myself, I always had a passion for life science from a young mm. age. And for me, once I got to university, there was no choice. I had to do science. And the best way to experience that, if, you're, uh, if you find that passion in yourself, is to get into a research laboratory and experience what it is to do science uh, at, the, at the cutting edge. Mm. Because uh, sitting in a classroom or doing rote exercises in a, in a uh, university laboratory taught by someone else is not science. Mm. Science is actually doing it yourself. So, right. uh, it, it, anyone, any young person out there who feels that passion has to go in and experience it for themselves. Right. Finance is a big field. And I think there are many different avenues toward contributing. We exemplify the academic research component of that. But we're a tiny part of the whole financial system. And there are many research, non-academic research, or other positions that uh, I, I think uh, it's hard to summarize. Uh, that there are many different niches. Let me just say that, in summary, that I think finance plays a fundamental role to our economy and that for creative people who can invent their own life course, there are many different ways of contributing. <laughs>